what's going on, guys? We are back for episode number three of the DaVinci Resolve podcast here, where I go through comments that you guys leave on my YouTube videos, and we talk about it, because sometimes it's easier just to sit here and talk about it and explain things a little more than it is to reply in a comment. Now, that's not to say I'm not going to reply to you guys, because I am, but uh, whew, a little out of breath. Just had to go run upstairs and uh, put the dog upstairs, because she was going a little crazy while I'm down here trying to film this podcast here, and... Um, Makes it a little bit difficult to record when you get the dog barking, right? Throwing a clip of the dog barking. I know it's been a little bit since we got into the last one. Got my friend Gemma over here. She's a little excited here for number three. But uh, it's been a little while. But can I help you? I can't. I can't. I can't film, I can't film if you're down there barking. You just, you'd be too, too noisy. Makes it a little difficult to uh, record a podcast. Just saying. Let's get the white balance card up while we're waiting. All right, so what we're going to do in this podcast is just go through comments that you guys leave on my YouTube channel. So grab your cup of joe, put it on in the car ride to work, whatever it might be, and uh, we're going to get into this and um, just answer your questions. So most of it is going to be based around DaVinci Resolve, but not all of it. Sometimes there's questions about uh, some of the other videos I have that are not DaVinci Resolve. So um, let's just get right into it. Oh, I'm catching my breath. <coughs> Whew, all right, so let's do this. All right, so jumping on to my YouTube channel here against the back end where I get all the comments and stuff. Just put out a video today uh, about the dialog leveler, which is a new feature in DaVinci Resolve 18.1.1. Um, dialog leveler is available in the free version as well as the studio version. And I wanted to know how compared to using Dynamics, using your standard compressor, your uh, expander or gate, as well as the makeup slider. And uh, I thought it was an interesting test. I thought, you know, the dialog leveler did okay. It's not bad. Uh, I prefer the dynamics because you've got more control over it and you can really sculpt the sound to make it work how you want it to. But I'm also an audio nerd, you know, and I like that kind of stuff. But if you don't like that kind of stuff, the dialog leveler is, uh, is going to be a great tool for you to use to at least get you started in the right direction there. All right, what time we got here? It's 1.30 right here, 1.30 in the afternoon. All right, let's get going here. So the first uh, first one we have is Gary, Gary Cunningham. You, uh, he watches all my videos. Gary, really appreciate you, man. Thank you for checking out all my videos. Always dropping a comment, always watching. Really appreciate you, Gary. He says, I personally believe it's good to know how compression works along with your audio, but of course the dialogue leveler is pretty awesome. And I would agree with that. It does a great job, but I think there's a time uh, and place for it. And if you really want to get in there and fine tune your audio, you're going to want to learn the dynamics. And I've got a video on that. Tells you everything you need to know, what the settings mean, all that. So you can check that out. I'll link it up here, and you can go uh, check that out. So uh, let's see. Next question we have here is actually when I tried to fix a broken hinge on one of my laptop screens, and um, I was able to fix it for, I think, 18 bucks was the hinge. It worked out pretty good. Um, and there was a question there about how there's some nuts inside the, the case of your laptop there that kind of popped off, but it didn't seem to affect the repair. So just random note to you guys. If your screen breaks, right, when you're trying to open and close it and it's not working well, um, it, is an, it is a pretty easy fix, at least on the Acer Nitro 5 that I had. Easy fix. Save yourself some bucks. And if you're, you know, kind of able to do that kind of thing and make repairs and things, uh, if you're a little handy, you're not afraid to open up your laptop. Again, I take no responsibility for anything here. But if you can open it up, it saves you a lot of bucks and it's uh, it's pretty easy to pretty easy to do. So just a couple more comments here we have about the, uh, the dialog leveler versus the dynamics. A lot of people seem to think that the dynamics worked better um, if you know how to use them, and I would kind of agree with that. So we'll just kind of skip on past some of these guys here. Uh, let's see. Have we tried doing alterations on the settings for the audio leveler? It seems a little unfair comparing the standard settings with the dynamics that you spent some time adjusting to get the best from. Um, if you adjust the dynamics to standard settings, it would still would it still be better? Better, I wonder. So you can adjust the dialog leveler. There's not a whole lot of settings here. Let's just jump into Resolve real quick. And uh, I'm going to show you what, what we got here. So, for example, on this track, Dialog Leveler, if I turn it on right here, we open it up. We don't have a whole ton of settings here, right? I mean, the, there's no presets in here. It's got baseline, but it's just all these standard settings. Now, you can op optimize for different things, wider dynamics, um, optimize for most sources, lift more lift on low levels, which would cause more of an issue uh, with some of that background noise like we saw in that video, or list, lift soft whispery voices so you could try it out i mean i would give them a try and it looks like it's the same kind of things for the toggles here um we do have the background reduction here well 
maybe that would 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 help. I don't know. I don't think you're going to get as good results as as you are with the dynamics, even if you change some of these things. But yeah, you can get in there and change some things. You just got to try it out for your clip or your track. And I do like how they have the output gain there. You can adjust that. That's pretty handy because I noticed that as our, our audio comes into this effect, the effect processes and it comes out, it does lose some gain or some levels, right? Some volume. So it's good that it's got that gain slider on there. All right, let's see. Here's another one. Would using voice isolation before or after processing further help isolate the background wind noise? And yes, I think it would um, when you're using the dialogue leveler. I think it would do a good job helping make it sound better. But the reason I didn't include it in that video is because that's a studio-only um, option or studio-only feature, and a lot of people only have the free version. And if I put it in there, then I thought people would be like, hey, that's not fair. We don't all have studio. We can't use uh, you know, the voice isolation. So that's why I didn't include it, but I do think it would, uh, would help out and would do a pretty good job, um, making the dialogue leveler work a little bit better. So, uh, that's, what's one thing to keep in mind. All right. Here's one that I like on a video called, uh, load these backups, how to restore project.db files. If you don't have your backups, but you got those DB files really handy to know. This guy says, uh, ton, 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 Tonton Lovell, sorry about the names, man. I, I I'm terrible with names. He says, man, I, it, uh, man, it just helped me a great deal. You have no idea. I have a question though. How do you come up with these techniques? Lord, load it, load it. How do you come up with these techniques? Well, a lot of the videos that I make are really answers to your guys' questions, right? Or answers to questions that I might have. I go through. I figure things out. How does it work? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, and that's how I come up with a lot of video ideas. Now, when we have a big update like 18.1.1 uh, here in Resolve, or we go up a version or something, or a bunch of new features comes out, that creates just a whole laundry list of uh, ideas, of things to show, of things to share with you guys. I mean, I've got a list a mile long of video ideas, and I just wish I had more time to make make more of them and edit more of them, but there's only so much time in a day, and you know, unfortunately, I can't sit in my studio all day and just film and edit and film and edit. I got other responsibilities too, you know, but, uh, but this is my main job here. My main day job, uh, of, of, you know, running my YouTube channel here and stuff. So I do put a lot of effort and a lot of time into it. Uh, but I, you know, I always have a huge list of ideas going. So I just pick from the list when I'm not sure what to do. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. I just pick from the list. And then usually when I start to run out of things that I feel like doing, Resolve ends up sending out some kind of big update or a version update or something. And then there you go. There's a whole new laundry list of things to uh, to work with. But we'd also like to get into doing some more collabs here, uh, especially with all the folks that I met at uh, ResolveCon. We would love to team up with some of them guys and make some videos. So maybe we'll try and make that happen up in this, this next coming year. All right, here's a question on a voiceover video that I did a long time ago. Uh, voiceover techniques are similar as far as how to set it up here in Resolve. It's not too different. Um, and I do have a more updated video on that. But he says, Al Alkiz, Alkiz? Uh, says, great, great video, short and concise. I want to add for those who are having trouble not finding your USB mic or whatever audio device you're using and it isn't showing up. Go to where it says DaVinci Resolve in the bold in bold in the upper left corner of the screen. Click on preferences, then go to audio and video I slash O. Go to input device, drop down, and you should see your device there. Then just repeat the steps of the video, which is the video that he was watching. So just jumping over to Resolve real quick. Check this out. If you are trying to patch in a microphone, um, you're going to do your patching here in Fairlight. But where he's talking about is right up here, DaVinci Resolve. Come down to preferences. When that opens up, uh, you're going to be in system right here. You have video and audio in slash out. And right here, you have your input and output device. So if you want to make sure your microphone selected, come here. Make sure you select your microphone. Mine is always my Evo 4, my audio interface. And that's what, what I have mine set up as. If you are having trouble with the output, right? You're not getting any sound from Resolve to your speakers or whatever it might be. Check the output device here. Drop that down and pick the one that works for uh, your setup. Now, keep in mind, if you're using Bluetooth, there is tons of problems with Bluetooth for some reason. So I would not recommend using any kind of Bluetooth speaker, headphone, whatever, uh, with DaVinci Resolve. Plug it in, whatever you got. Plug it in, hardwired headphones, whatever it might be. Go old school right here. I'm talking, can I get it over here before without whacking stuff? Old school wired headphones. They're going to work the best and give you the best results and the least amount of latency and things like that. So, so that is voiceovers. Let's see what we got next. Power Windows, how do I select all my keyframes at once? I want to reduce feathering on all keyframes, but my mask, oh, of my mask, but dear God, surely I'm not supposed to do it frame by frame. 
selecting them all and dragging them doesn't work. That'd be just too easy and intuitive. Power windows. Um, let's see. I'm not exactly sure what you got going on here, but let's jump in and create a power window real quick. So if I just throw a, a let's just draw a power window on here. Boom, boom, boom. Right. And then I guess you're saying you want to adjust the feathering of it, but you've got a whole bunch of keyframes in there. So let's see if I uh, keyframe this guy. Where's my keyframes at? Set our corrector. Move that. Move that. And now let's say I wanted to adjust the sizing of them all. I guess when you're setting your, your keyframes here, maybe you don't want to select all these things so that way you can come back and change it without it, you know, changing per, per node. So I'm not really sure if you can do it the way you're thinking. Um, unless when I'm in here, if I, uh, if I didn't select one of these things, but it looks like they're all tied into the power curve there. So maybe you need to set that at the beginning. I'm not hundred percent sure, but, um, I would just have to play with it more and see if I can figure that out for you. Cause, uh, I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me do that. So anyway, let's check the next question. Here's a question on uh, some awesome intros that I did about using a motion array template. It says, thanks for the video. Only problem I have with those templates is I can't add more scenes to it. 12 in this case for that particular video are okay. But what if I want to add another 10? Well, there's um, a few ways you could do it. You could probably copy things within the template. But what I would probably do that would be quicker is I would just make another duplicate of the entire template and then just create, you know, 10 more scenes in there that I want, export them out, put them together in my final video because you'll have to do that anyway. Um, and, and that would probably work out, but that's what, what I would probably do. I get these comments all the time. Roberto Ramos, you speak too fast. I apologize, Roberto. I know I'm from New Jersey. I talk fast here. Uh, my brain goes faster than my lips can move, which is already too fast, you know? So I apologize for the fast talking, but you, if you can, if uh, you jump on the YouTube there, watch me at like 50% speed. Then maybe I'll sound kind of normal, you know, but apologize for uh, speaking fast. But hey, yeah, but it's just how I am. I think I was born that way. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. All right. Uh, let's see. Next one. Creative Corey here. Are there any audio like or audio plugins like Alex Audio Butler? Um, or do you have any videos on how to easily edit talking head videos and adding background music? So there's a lot of plugins out there. Um, Alex Audio Butler, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like a one, two click option to get your audio sounding uh, pretty good. It does a good job. If you don't know anything about audio, you don't know how to edit audio, you don't know how to do anything. Um, it can set your levels for you It apply some compression. It, it's not bad. Um, but once you get into working with your audio, I find that you have, you got so much more control, just doing it yourself here in Fairlight. Um, the tools are here that, that we need. We have Tons of great things that we can use and apply to our clips, EQ, dynamics, effects, um, all that kind of stuff that that are really easy to use once you kind of get the hang of them. Um, and they're going to do a better job for you than, in my opinion, than something uh, like the Audio Butler plugins. So that's one thing to keep in mind. That said, there are some awesome plugins out there. I like a lot of Waves plugins. Um, while they're not officially supported for DaVinci Resolve, I don't know why I keep asking the question um, to those guys, and I haven't heard back yet, so hopefully they either start to support Resolve or give me a reason why they don't. I'm kind of curious, uh, but I keep asking that question because they're just standard VST plugins. They work fine, and um, I, I think a lot of them are, are really good because they're from the music world, and that's what they're built for is audio. So um, I like those a lot. There are other ones out there that, that you can find, um, none that I'm aware of off the top of my head, um, but there are more out there that you can you can probably search for and, and take a look at. Um, but anything that's going to work in the audio world is usually transferable into DaVinci Resolve if it's a VST plugin because Resolve supports all that. So um, just look around for VST plugins and, and see what you can find. All right, John W. here says, the learning curve on DaVinci Resolve is steep because it's a Swiss Army knife, but basically you don't have to know every option or even use them unless you need them. Actual edit, uh, The actual editor is similar to others. And that's true. That's on a 10... DaVinci Resolve tips that you should know. Great video. Uh, well, at least I thought it was great. Had fun making it. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I said in there that the learning curve is steep because I think that it is. There's a lot of little things that you got to know when you're getting started in Resolve. And if you don't know, it makes learning Resolve frustrating and, um, you know, can trip you up a lot. And I went through that when I got started. And that's one of the reasons I started making videos here in DaVinci Resolve. Watched a lot of Casey Ferris's videos and, uh, you know, he had a ton of great information, but he was kind of like one of the only folks out there making videos when I started Resolve. There was a few others, um, 
but not too many. And I just needed basic stuff to get started. And I was having trouble finding some things. And as I figured things out, I started making, making videos and voila, here we are a couple years later, um, still making DaVinci Resolve videos to help you guys out. But, um, yeah, what I say is take things as they come. When you run into a problem, search it, look for the answer. And now there's so much good info out there. You're going to find it. Um, and then, you know, figure out that problem and then move on with your project. Don't try and learn everything all at once. I mean, this program is like, like endless. I mean, it just goes on and on and there's no way that you're going to be an expert in the whole thing. A lot of people specialize in are experts in areas. Like people think of me as like an audio guy. I mean, I just do my best with it. You got color graders out there like Darren and Cullen, and you've got Casey with the, you know, fusion and the VFX stuff and, and Patrick with VFX. And I mean, there's just, you know, everybody kind of specializes in a little thing. We all know, you know, a lot about it, but we all kind of focus on some more, uh, you know, specific parts, but there's just that much to the program that really, I mean, you could spend all your time on one aspect of this program. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. So, um, yeah, so take it as it comes. That's, that's what I say. Uh, I love this guy, Hound Dog Mac. He comments a lot. Uh, please don't make a vertical videos. They suck for so many reasons. He cracks me up. He's always commenting on the vertical videos and the shorts that I put out. It's funny. It just cracks me up because you always watch them. I know, I know, I know. You don't want to miss anything good. You, you don't want to be left out, right? FOMO, right? If you're missing out, I got gotcha. you. But, um, but I'm going to do it because a lot of people like it. It's something different and uh, you got to keep up with the times. Otherwise, I don't want to be obsolete, right? Who wants to go back to a nine to five? I want to sit here and make YouTube videos for you guys, right? It's a whole lot more fun than the nine to five. All right, coming down. Another question on a voiceover video. This is my uh, more recent verse voiceover video. I've patched the input mic with the input tracks and I can press the arm to record button, but nothing gets recorded like my mic's not getting recorded correctly uh, on Audacity. It works. All right. So just a couple things that I would check when you're having problems with voiceovers, it's only going to be a handful of reasons that I can think of uh, as far as why it's not working. One, get your microphone set up before you even turn on or open up DaVinci Resolve. Get your mic set up. Make sure your computer sees it. Make sure your, you know, your little input levels or whatever you got there on your computer are, are set up and it's, it's shown that you see it there. Then go ahead and open up Resolve and you want to jump into Fairlight and try and patch it in. So if we uh, take a look at Resolve here, jumping into Fairlight, you go Fairlight, patch input, output. It's going to bring up this guy for you. On source side, you want audio inputs. On destination, you want to have track inputs. Now I'm going to see all my tracks here. Now I know that my microphone goes into channel one on my audio interface, but if you don't see your microphone here, you're like, wait, I don't see it. Where is it? That's where you're going to want to jump back into those preferences that we just talked about uh, and make sure that your microphone is set as the input. So if I close this, come back to DaVinci Resolve, preferences, this guy over system at the top, audio and video, I slash O, input device under audio in and out right here. Make sure your microphone's set up to be right there then you should be all right and you should see the microphone here in Resolve. If you're not, I don't know what's going on or your microphone or actually your audio interface, depending on how, how you have your, your setup. So like this microphone goes into an audio interface. So that's why I'm seeing that. So if you're not seeing it after you do this, I don't know. It, I, it, the problem might be between the keyboard and the, and, and, uh, and the computer. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I'm not sure why it might not work. But if you do those things, it should work and it should be patched to your channel. And then you would come to your channel tracks, arm it to record. It's not working now because I'm not patched in. And then you hit the record button and everything should work. So, um, so that, that's how it works. And that's what you need to do. If it's not working for you, um, I don't know what might be going on there for you. Next question, uh, right down here. This is always a good one. Um, on the no sound in Resolve videos, people have sound problems. Now, you might want to check out the uh, the preferences again that we just looked at to make sure your speakers are set up right. But um, if they're not, try restarting. This guy, Bad TV here, says, I just restarted and it worked. LMAO. <laughs> so and sometimes it's as easy as that, right? There, there's weird problems uh, you know, in Resolve that we run into. I don't know why. just happens sometimes. And sometimes a restart will go ahead and fix all that up for you. All right, let's see. Danny DJ, Dandy, Dandy DJ uh, on my 10 Resolve Tips says, great video. I have trouble watching many of your videos because you're so animated. It's just too much for me. But this one was spot on and I got a lot of value from it. Awesome, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, I know I have to... Hey, I might not be the best person here making videos. Matter of fact, I'm probably not. But uh, I just get jazzed up to make videos. It's, it's fun for me. I, I, I mean, I've been talking into a camera for longer than I can remember since I was a kid, so... 
It's like no big deal, you know. Um, I enjoy it, and uh, I just get jazzed up to get down here in my studio, make some videos, and and uh, be able to help people out. I mean, that's kind of why I'm always so animated and excited up and all that. So, hey, you get, it's what you get with me, I guess. I don't know. What, what, what are you going to do? I mean, I could talk a little bit, you know, chiller. I thought about making a whole video like that where it was just very chill, very calm, not get excited, you know, take it nice and easy. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. Maybe that's fine. I don't know. Maybe it would give me more views. I don't know. I don't know. Help me get to 100K maybe. All right. Another another uh, comment here on the 10 DaVinci Resolve tips that you should know. Match frame for the win. I needed that in my last training video. I was editing. Editing while overtired meant a lot of mistakes uh, were made and the audio was all over the place. I fixed it by hand, but this one trick would have saved me quite a bit of time. I also would have been trying out the uh, audio level or two thanks or i'll also be trying out the audio level or two thanks again jason match frame is awesome uh, if you don't know it let me just jump in resolve show you real quick so in the edit tab here let's say that uh you know i have a uh, a clip here that's got audio to it um do i have a clip in here that's got audio to it let's see yeah here we go so if i come in and let's say i drop in this clip right and let's say, oops, I, I unlinked my tracks and I pushed this one out of whack, or maybe I deleted my audio. I'm like, how do I get that back? Well, what I can do is come and put my playhead at the beginning of my clip and click on this guy. Where are you? Where are you, match frame? Boop, there he is, right there, match frame, this little tool right here. You can go ahead and click on that. Now, what it's going to do is jump into the media pool. And actually, if I close these so that we've got both viewers open here. It's going to jump into the media pool. It's going to find that point of the video and actually mark the in points and the out points of that video. And now that it's there, I can just grab my audio, drag it down, boom, drop it at my playhead. And there we go. It's synced back up. And even if this clip was shorter here, so if I shorten it down, put my playhead there, I'm going to match frame again. And now up here, you can see it set the in and out points that match this. So now I can just grab my audio, boom, drop it down. Now we're good to go. Everything is synced back up. So match frame is super handy. And uh, when you need it, you need it. And it helps save a whole lot of time. All right. I comment on uh, how to get the best sound from the Blue Yeti microphone. Use that for a long time. A lot of people still have that microphone. A lot of people like it a lot. Guy just made a comment saying, hey, make sure you stay updated with the software. I didn't even know there was firmware, software, whatever, whatever firmware, I guess, to update that microphone. I'll have to plug it in and try it out, see if I can update it. Um, had no idea. So good thing to keep in mind if you're using any kind of microphone software, always make sure that you are up to date. All right, let's see. So the bread here, a little comment from the bread on a no audio in DaVinci Resolve video. For me, the problem is almost always related to Bluetooth headphones. Every time they connect, this, uh, DaVinci Resolve recognizes them as something unique and thusly assigns no audio output to them. There are a hundred other problems created uh, by the use of Bluetooth in DaVinci, and I'm surprised that they haven't stated it's not compatible. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, like I said before, I think I said earlier, that Bluetooth headphones cause a whole world of problems here in, in Resolve. They they don't connect good. There's latency issues. Um, I just, just don't use them. Just use your wired headphones. Uh, you're going to be better off and you're going to get better results too. So just don't use Bluetooth in, in Resolve. It's just, it's just not good. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, all right, moving on, moving on. What did it, What to do if you forgot to back up DaVinci Resolve 17, 18, or any version? Tang here says, I thought I lost all my project when it shows nothing. Thanks for your help. So you can actually back up your projects once you install a new version uh, before you upgrade the database. There's an option for you to back up your database. But always, always, always back up the database. It's super important. I try to do it at least once a month or before I upgrade any time because that's going to back up all your projects for you. You don't have to back them up individually then. You can just back up the entire database. Everything is going to be there for you. Now, keep in mind, it's only your project files. That is not your media files, right? Like your videos, your, your different assets for your project. So keep that in mind. Always back up. You got to back up. All right, let's see. What are the questions we got here? Scroll down a little bit. All right, on how to delete render cache files because they add up and get huge. I gained 87 gigs. People gained terabytes of data based on comments I've seen. How do you remove or delete old projects from Pumpkinhead 343? Pretty easy. If you want to get rid of old projects, come down to the little house icon down at the bottom here. Open up your project manager and any project you want to get rid of, just select it, right click, delete right there. Hit delete and it'll get rid of your project. Boom, it's gone. 
So that's how you delete projects from your project library. Next, a good comment here on a video called Make Vocal Sound Professional in DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, a lot of the old videos, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Any of the old videos that I have on Resolve 16, 17, almost everything is applicable to 17, 18, to whatever the new versions are, everything applies uh, for the most part. So do I need to do each step every time I start a new project or can I somehow save audio settings so it'll be applied in every new project automatically? No, you don't have to do it every single time. Yes, we can save presets for pretty much anything that you want. Check it out. Um, jumping into Resolve here, if we jump over into Fairlight. Now, let's say I made a bunch of changes on an audio track and I want to save those changes. You come to Fairlight, you got your preset library right here. And in the preset library, you can save any one a uh, number of these presets here. You can save EQ presets, dynamics, plugin presets, global track presets, which come in very handy, global bus presets, and Fairlight configuration presets. So what I use a lot is global track presets because I have one set up for, you know, uh, my MKE 600, my microphone. I have it set up. So my recording situation is the same in my, in my studio here. Jump in and resolve. I've made my recording. Boom, I apply this to my one track that has my microphone on it. Boom, I'm good to go. I don't have to go through and, you know, fiddle and do changes to everything. It's going to set EQ, dynamics, effects, levels. It's going to do all that in one click for me. But if you wanted to break it out, you could just, you know, between the equalizer, dynamics, and plugins, presets here, you can say presets. Now, it's not going to apply automatically unless you create a project preset, like a project file preset. So that is a little bit different. In order to do that, uh, you come to your um, project library right here. And to create the presets, let's see, where where is it at here? They move things around a little bit on me. So if I just created a new project, uh, nope, it's not a new project. Where did they put these guys on me? I just saw them the other day. It was driving me a little bonkers. I swore it was in here. But maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's in project settings. Ah, yes, yes. Here's where, okay. Here's where it is. Um, if you came into project settings and then the three little dots at the top corner here, that is where they hid all of the project settings presets. I got to make a short about this and put that out there because this drove me nuts for a little while. I was like, dude, where did the, where the, where the presets go? So to set up a project preset where it would have your, um, your, your audio stuff automatically applied, here's what you'd do. You'd start a brand new project from scratch, brand new project, Set up the things that you want in there. Don't put any media. Just set up, you know, maybe a couple tracks. Set up your uh, your audio settings, however you'd want it. Um, if they're, you know, your frame rate, your uh, your resolution, that kind of stuff. Set that stuff up. Once you do that, then you would come into here into the project settings and um, shrink this guy down. You come into your project settings. You'd hit these three dots, and then you can go save current settings as preset, and then you would save it as a preset there. And then when you go to start a new project, you create your new project. Again, you would come back to your project settings here, and then you would select one of your, uh, your presets here. Like for example, I want to do uh, 30 frames per second at 4k. And I would say load preset. You load it up, boom, you're good to go. It should have all that stuff in there for you. Um, as far as anything that you saved in there in that project preset. So that is a way that you can be set up, running, ready, good to go. Uh, in, in no time there with, literally, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go two clicks. I'm gonna go two clicks. So one to create the new project. And then, um, you know, these couple clicks here, or I guess it's a couple more clicks. You get the idea. Um, you just set the project up there and, and then you're good to go. So that's how you could save everything there. So you don't have to do it every single time you jump into resolve. So that's, uh, that's pretty handy. All right. Uh, question on the best background noise reduction. And that is the clarity VX. Although with the new uh, noise uh, uh, voice, along with the new voice isolation, you may not need clarity, right? They, they both work good. The voice isolation now in Resolve and clarity, they're very similar. They both do a really good job. But if you got clarity, uh, let's see this question here from RBG Image. Thanks for the video. Two questions, though. I bought the plugin and everything seems fine until I add the plugin on two or more tracks. Now the audio shutters and it's unusable. I've also chose the effect in the AU menu instead of the VST because the VST one doesn't work on just one track. Uh, do you have a solution for this? Cheers, Ravi. Hey, Ravi. So uh, what I say, what I responded in a comment there and what I'd recommend to you guys, if you're having problems with, you know, multiple audio plugins like Clarity VX here on multiple tracks and it's kind of dogging down your computer, it's stuttering. I've run into that too. What I would do is I would apply the effect on a bus and then route your tracks to the bus. And that way you only have one instance of the effect and all of your tracks are getting sent into that bus 
and then you should be good to go. And that should help kind of ease the load on, on your computer there, um, as opposed to having the effect applied on, you know, multiple different tracks, which could just bog down your computer a little bit. So, so that should, uh, that should help out a little bit. Next one, make your audio sound professional using Fairlight Part 1. Hi, Jason. Great videos as usual. Thanks. I'm struggling with one effect I want to use, and maybe you're the man who can sort it out. I want to create a Doppler effect with a continuous sounding clip, which means gradually change the pitch from starting at one semitone higher and then ending at a semitone lower and panning at the same point. But I can't figure it out. Can you? So the way that you're going to do this is you're going to use... Um, uh, automation. So I've been wanting to make an automation video here uh, in Resolve for quite a while, and I just I just haven't gotten to it because I feel like I need to really dig into it a little bit more so I completely understand it so I can explain it to you guys. But if you jump into Resolve here, the automation tools in Fairlight allow you to make a change over time, kind of like adding keyframes, um, but not physically using like a keyframe kind of button, right? So Automation tools are right here. You would turn that on. And then down in your clip here, you can change all these things over time while you're playing back your video, right? So in in uh, his case, he wanted to change the, um, the uh, what was it, the pitch? Was it the pitch? Pitch, yes. So for example, if I went to my track here and I put on my pitch effect, uh, pitch, fair light, boom. So I put it on there. And I uh, come up to my audio track one. If I come and select the item that I would like to change by my auto using my automation, you can see we've got pitch right here. And now I can select what I want to change. So I'd want to change the semitones, right? That's what he wanted to change. So how it would work is I turn that on and uh, then I would go ahead and open my pitch back up. And now I'm going to play through my video. And as I play through it, I can change these and it's going to write those changes on top of the clip. It's going to automate that change for me. So it'll do it automatically. And uh, and that's how you would kind of use the automation. And you can change it from, you know, a low pitch to a high pitch to a chipmunk voice, whatever. And it's going to make those effects and, uh, and, and, and record them, the changes, over time. So it's similar to using keyframes, same idea, um, but it's just, they call it, you know, automation for audio. So... Um, so you can do that, and that's the best way to probably do that. All right, the next one here, how to make music songs longer in DaVinci Resolve. Um, so comment from Zayulu. Zayulu. I don't know. <laughs> how do I increase the entire length of an audio track? No cuts or other edits. I don't care on the pitch chains. I don't want to cut it. I want to record a track of a microphone, and it's just not matching the rest of the audio track for some reason. It's just me talking. It doesn't match the other person talking. Um, I just need it to be stretched. So you can just stretch out some audio. There is a tool. It's called the Elastic Tool, which is super handy. So if we jump into Fairlight here, let me show you this, guy. This is pretty cool. So let's just uh, make some room here. Whoop, close this down. Let's say that um, I needed to stretch this clip out a little bit here. In order to do that, I can select my clip. I'm going to right-click. And we have right here, we have Elastic Wave. So if I go ahead and click on that, and then now I come into my timeline here, and if I hover my clip, see this little symbol that's appearing uh, on my cursor right here? I can click, hold, and drag, and now it's going to just stretch that clip, right? We're not speeding it up, slowing it down, we're stretching it, right? So if I stretch it out, I don't know, that much? Let's see how it sounds. Got to grab my headphones here. How's that sound? Uh, my audio clip here. All right, just change the uh, the audio sound there a little bit, right? Sounds a little little weird, a little weird, but um, but there you go. That's how you can just stretch the audio instead of like you know splicing it and piecing it together and all that. You could just stretch it out like that using the elastic tool, and uh, it does come in handy sometimes if you just need to say adjust a, a, a music track just a little bit. Comes in handy. All right, just because I like this comment here on the 10 DaVinci Resolve tips that you should know. And actually, I'm going to have a uh, 10 tips for working in the Fairlight timeline coming up. And believe it or not, I filmed the whole video, whole thing, got it all done, and uh, accidentally deleted uh, my footage off the card when I formatted it to put it in the Blackmagic Pocket 6K over here. Oh, man, so now i got to redo the entire video because all I got is audio from my screen recording. Ah! Anyway... Says, not going to lie, there's a lot of useful stuff right there. Max Alamonte. Thanks, Max. Appreciate that, man. All right, let's see. What else do we got here? This one is a uh, question here that uh, came in on the 
how to get the best sound from your Blue Yeti microphone. And this could apply to any uh, microphones that you might be using. Um, and as far as getting like short clicks or weird noises. So he says, I recorded my audiobook with the Blue Yeti. There are short clicks throughout the book. I recorded on two different software programs and my husband tried to record to see if he had, uh, had them in his clips. He did. So two software programs and two people have tried the same clicks in different settings. Do you have any ideas? A couple ideas. If you're running into problems where your microphone is uh, in the recording, there's clicks, there's pops, there's weird noises. It's not you speaking. Something else is going on. A couple things to check. Number one, this right here, this little thing, this little cell phone thing right here, I find causes lots of issues. And I should actually throw it back there because if I have it too close to my microphone, too close to my cord, or even my headphone wire back here that's plugged into my audio interface, if my phone is too close to it, it creates interference and I get a buzz, I get a static, I get a pop. May not do it consistently, may do it on and off, but it's super annoying. So a lot of times there's going to be interference. Um, now, these cables are usually shielded fairly well, but you're going to run into things sometimes like that where there's just interference and who knows why it is, but you want to check, make sure you don't have electrical cables next to say your microphone cord here, or, um, maybe keep, make sure your phone's not near your microphone. Are there other cables running on top of your USB cable, your XLR cable, check those kind of things because there's going to be some, there could be, there could be some interference happening there. So you want to check that. Um, I would definitely check that. Another thing to check is that make sure that, uh, your, um, sample rates match, right? A lot of times, you know, things might default to different sample rates for some reason. For example, uh, there's been times where my my computer, my Mac, defaults to 44K for a sample rate, but in DaVinci Resolve, I'm at 48K. Then you try and record, and the voice is going to sound weird. The recording's not going to sound good. It's going to be uh, all, all messed up. So you want to keep that in mind and um, check that. Check your sample rate. So those are some things that I would check if you're having issues with your microphone, popping, clicking, interference, that kind of stuff, things you kind of want to check. All right, here's a comment on Edit to the Beat with the new grid and uh, crossfade gaps in DaVinci Resolve 18. So uh, EK Photography here says, uh, wouldn't it be better if DaVinci or if we could put markers on the audio clip to the beat after DaVinci Resolve makes the grid and then just use that in the timeline instead of cutting clips like you did in Fairlight? I use an app called Beatmark X in Final Cut Pro, and it gives you an XML file with the audio with markers uh, to the beat so you can just edit to those markers. Is it possible to do it this way instead? Can you just add markers on the audio? And then when you're back in the timeline, uh, will the audio music clip have those markers on it? Seems tedious to do it in Fairlight. So I think one of the things that uh, hopefully they'll add, and they, I mean Blackmagic Design will add, is the ability to have your grid and, and see these, you know, transients and markers and things in the edit tab because it's not easy to work with the video in Fairlight. It's not as smooth and as quick and as easy as working with it in uh, in the edit tab. But you can jump from marker to marker, uh, or I'm sorry, grid to grid. Uh, if I turn on the grid here, uh, let's see. Let's just turn this on real quick. Um, frame, let's just, I don't know, let me pick something here. Do quarter notes, let's do bars, four, four. Change this to... All right. So if I uh, if I zoom in here a little bit, you can jump marker to marker. Let's see. How do we do it here? No. I'm sure there's a keyboard shortcut here. Question is, what is that shortcut? I guess you just got to kind of click. I mean, yeah, that's a pain to have to put the marker on that way. You know, and, and then just, you know, keep clicking ahead like this. Right? But I wonder then if I select... Can I select these guys? Oh. Let's see. No, I can't. I can't select the select the multiple ones. Can I copy them? All right, so you can copy them. So you can pull the markers and split them. I actually didn't know you could split a marker like that, but that's kind of cool. I guess you could do that. Unfortunately, there's nothing like automate automate to sequence. I think it's called in Premiere Pro. I haven't used it, but I've seen videos on it. It's pretty sweet. I mean, it just it just takes your clips and puts it right to the beat for you. And if I had to bet, I would say that Blackmagic is going to add a feature like that here in Resolve at some point in time. I mean. They just keep adding in all these awesome features, and I think it's just a matter of time before they add something that'll make it a whole lot easier, a whole lot quicker for us to edit to the beat, where you can just take your clips, say, hey, here's all my clips, Brrr, pop it right on the beats, and you're done, you're good to go. So hopefully they add that in uh, in soon, and um, I don't know, I'm confident. I'm confident Blackmagic will do that, because you guys are awesome, Blackmagic. Props, man, you guys are awesome.
Here's one on a post I had, uh, just a picture of me with the camera. I was outside filming some stuff one morning, and I got a phone call, so just hold on a second there. All right, all right, we're back, we're back. All right, so a guy says, uh, Scratch and Spoon Lotto. Lotto? 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 I don't know. Whatever it is. Good morning, sir. I need help. I'm in the market for a good camera. I want to add more dimension to my videos, as well as adding multi-view to my finished videos. Is there a specific video you have that can help guide me in the right direction for a, cam a video camera purchase? So one thing, um, I, I mean, I did uh, give you some some tips there, but uh, one thing that I would keep in mind is that maybe it's not the camera that you need. If you're looking to add more dimension to your videos, maybe you just need some lighting, right? I got some good lights over here. I got there. I got a bunch of lights back there. Maybe you just need to change up the angle a little bit or, you know, change the lighting a little bit or grab a softbox instead of like, I got harsh LEDs up here and I move my softbox over here because it looks better. Maybe you just need to think about doing that and using the camera that you got. Um, I don't know what you're shooting with. I have no idea. Um, but if you are looking to get a new camera, what I would do is set your budget first and then kind of look for the things that you want in a camera within your budget, right? Because, I mean, cameras can be, I'm not going to say cheap, but relatively inexpensive, all the way up to hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So decide how much you want to spend and then start to look for features that you might want. One place you could check out and where I got the camera I'm filming on here, um, well, if you're just listening, you're not going to see it, but if you're watching, uh, the Canon C100 Mark II right here, it's a couple years old. I think this camera came out in 2015, 16, 14, somewhere around there, but I picked it up used from a website called mpb.com. And they sell all kinds of used gear there. And, I mean, the thing came. It's, like, brand new. It just wasn't in the, the brand new box, you know? It was used. Um, so, you know, I think when these cameras came out new, they were, you know, five grand or something like that. So I picked it up for 1700 bucks, And it's been awesome. It's Now it's my workhorse camera for all my YouTube videos here. Um, does a great job. So check out the used market there. But be careful. Make sure you go to a rep reputable place and, um, and, and pick it up there. But that can definitely save you a lot of money um, versus going to buy something brand new. So, so that's kind of how I would, uh, would approach getting a new, uh, new camera comment on the best blue sound, how to get the best sound from the blue Yeti. What would you say is the best video editing software for beginners? I would say go with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's not, not an easy program to learn, but, um, you know, if you want something a little more sim simple, you could do iMovie, you could do, I don't know, there's like programs online that I don't even I don't even know what they are because I've never used them. Um, I started with iMovie, then I jumped to DaVinci Resolve. So um, Resolve's tricky, but hey, I'm a Resolve guy, so I'm going to say go with Resolve. All right, let's see. What else do we got here? A lot of like and subscribe. Another comment on the Blue Yeti video, but this could pertain to anybody making videos here um, or in screen recordings. I don't want my mic to pick up my mouse and keyboard sounds from Black Red 10. Well, that's going to be tricky. Um, what I would recommend is put your microphone, say, here. Have your keyboard on the other side of your microphone and use a cardioid pickup pattern. That's going to help, right, where we're only picking up in front of the microphone, not behind it. The other thing that's going to help is if you use a microphone like this guy right here, that's a dynamic microphone that's that's really geared towards just picking up, you know, in one direction. Um, and it really does a good job of isolating things from coming from around the microphone depends, right? Um, you're probably still going to pick up some clicks and typing. I know I get the space bar all the time when I'm recording my screen recordings because my microphone picks it up and you hear like, so a lot of times I make my cuts just on the other side of that, that, that hitting the space bar thing because it's annoying. I hate it, but you know, you could try also getting a quieter keyboard, right? Some of the keyboards I've used, man, it's like, they're super duper loud. So you could try getting a quieter keyboard. Um, those are some of the things that I would try there. Um, if you're, if you're having issues with the keyboard being too loud. Here's one on uh, the database video. I got eight, da uh, eight DaVinci Resolve database questions I get all the time. So um, Christian Stettelizzi, I'm sorry, the, I, these names, it's, it's tough. Christian, it says, it sounds like a silly question, but why would you create a new database? And if, and if there's a good reason, and I can't read either, apparently, and if there's a good reason, how often? So you can create a new database. Um, I've thought about doing one, but I've actually had one database going for a quite a while. I used to have maybe like two different ones. Um, but if I take a look at my database here, bring up my project manager in, in Resolve, local database, that's all I got. And all my projects for the last couple of years are all in here. All my DaVinci Resolve projects, I've got clients, projects, uh, I pretty much have everything in here. I mean, I've got tons of stuff. Um, the reason for keeping one database is because you can use power bins, you can use power grades, things are easy to transfer between projects if you want to copy things from one project to another. Um, that's why you'd want to use one database. 
Maybe you want to make a new database yearly or something. Um, and then you can just, you know, maybe drag like your power bins and stuff like from one to the other or I'm not even sure if you could do that. I don't know. I've always had the one database and I just back that up. And at some point, I think I'm going to make a new database just to kind of clean it up and, and start over. But, uh, you know, when I do that, I'll have to figure out how do I bring over my power bins and power grades and and uh, and that kind of stuff. So plus all the presets that I got, right? I think, I don't know if they would just all show up. Maybe they would. I don't know. I'll have to look into that at some point whenever I uh, make a new database. But until I have problems, I'm just going to keep using the same database. So I would use one database. If you feel the need to make a new one, go ahead and make a new one. But uh, I've been using one. I've been using one and haven't had any issues for a uh, quite a long time, a couple of years now. All right, here's one from my slick audio delay effect in DaVinci Resolve 18: How to make your audio ring out, 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 kind of like that. Great video. But anyway, he says uh, it's AD Associates. Says great video. Will you plan to have DR audio editing for people who want to take advantage of Resolve's audio rich or audio awesome rich features to edit music audio for listening? Wait, have you seen any of the videos on my channel? I got tons of audio editing videos on my channel. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I got tons of stuff there. Um, if there's something specific that you were looking for, uh, looks like he commented back, said, uh, we just want to edit our music to sound better. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have anything specifically for music, but if you're looking for putting music behind dialogue and all that, I've got that kind of stuff. Um, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, you could apply uh, anything that you watch from people who actually do music producing and stuff. There's tons of people who do that on uh, on YouTube here. Look for people who do that and how to mix and all that kind of stuff. And then you could just apply that right on over here in Resolve. It's the same thing. A lot of the plugins that, that the music guys use will work right here in Resolve. Again, but one thing to keep in mind is that Fairlight's not a full dedicated DAW yet. So you might be missing some of the functionality of a dedicated DAW. But um, you could do a lot of the things for just like mixing and stuff and applying effects and things like that right here in Resolve. So go to the music world, search YouTube for, you know, producers, mixers, um, you know, audio engineers, things like that, where they're actually mixing music or creating music tracks, if that's what you're, you're looking for. And uh, you'll find a lot, of, a lot of good stuff there. Here's one on uh, my video, how to make YouTube shorts for TikTok or YouTube shorts or TikToks. Arctic Fox says... I can make a short. Now, how do I upload it to YouTube so it appears as a short and appears in the shorts section? So the first thing is obviously making sure that it's a vertical video, right? If it's not vertical, it's not going to appear in the shorts section. The second thing is that when you upload it from like a computer uh, or a video that you've made, you need to include the hashtag shorts in the title of the video. And I, I think you're supposed to include it in the description too, or one or the other. I put it in both. If I'm uploading, I'll put it in the title and in the description itself. So that way I make sure it makes it to the shorts bar. But if you, um, if you upload it from your phone here, there's nothing you don't have to put in the hashtag. It's automatically going to upload it as a short. If you're using the create, I think what was it called create shorts feature there on the phone. Um, so then it should automatically upload it as a short and, uh, and you should be good to go. So, uh, make sure you include that hashtag hash tag shorts in order to make it sure it shows up in the shorts bar. Why does that sound like a tongue twister? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. On to the next question. All right. Here's a good question here on the, uh, the slick audio delay effect. Um, Pascal Payant says, Hey, quick question. If you put reverb on a track and bring multiple clips onto that track, how can we modify the reverb aspect so that the tr uh, for the track so that it's not the same for all the clips. Meaning, how can we change the reverb style for particular clips if we have reverb applied to our track? Well, you can use some automation and, and change it that way, but I think the easier way might be to just have multiple tracks with the different styles of reverb that you want and put your clips in those you know corresponding tracks. I think that's going to be your best bet. Um, it's going to be the easiest to make any changes that way, I think, if you have to make any changes. So that's what I would do. I would just... Uh, apply, you know, my reverb on the different tracks. Or the other option is if you don't want to do that, you want to keep all those audio clips in one track is just apply the reverb to the clip. So instead of putting it on the whole track, you bring it and drop it down onto a specific clip uh, from your effects library, just drop the reverb on the clip, and then you'll have the reverb for that specific clip. And, uh, and then that way you don't have to um, move things around too much if you don't want to. So that's how I would kind of handle that. Let's see if we can get one or two more questions in here. I don't know. It's been going for a while here. And uh, there's some soccer on. I want to go watch one of these soccer games. World Cup's going on, baby. Woo! So let's answer a couple more uh, a couple more here, and then uh, we're going to wrap this guy up. 
All right, here's one uh, on uh, the 10 DaVinci Resolve tips. And uh, Richard Shelton says, thank you, Jason. What screen recorder do you use or recommend? So I am on a Mac, MacBook mini over here. So on a Mac, I use a program called ScreenFlow. This program is awesome. I've been using it for a long time. Really easy to screen record, to record the audio from your screen, multiple audio input sources. I could plug the camera directly in and it would film that right in. Um, it's got a lot of great features. It's a pretty reasonably priced program. Um, and it, it's great. I mean, I love it. it. It does have a little bit of issues though. Uh, I'm on uh, Mac. What am I on? Mac Ventura. So, um, just upgrade, upgraded to Ventura recently and I am having some issues. I found a workaround. Um, so it all still works just fine. Um, but if you're on Mac and you're in Ventura, I'd wait a little bit before, uh, before picking up ScreenFlow. They're supposed to put out an update soon to fix some of the issues they had. But ScreenFlow is awesome. If you're on a PC, um, a lot of people use OBS. I've used it before too. There's just not as much functionality as being able to like highlight your mouse cursor and stuff like that when you're moving around um, and just do some of the quick, simple things that you might want to do, like highlight areas of the screen and things like that. Um, but you can do it. OBS will work good. Um, you can even record, if you're on a Mac, you could record directly through QuickTime. Just do a screen recording and that's free. Uh, there's a bunch of other, you know, programs out there. Um, I don't know as many on the PC side cause I don't use a PC very often and ScreenFlow is just what I've been using for years on Mac and, uh, and that works out good. I got to make a video on that cause so many people ask and, uh, it should really just show you guys, um, you know, what it's, what it's all about. And really, I, I mean, I barely scratched the surface of that ScreenFlow program too. I just use a couple features, a couple presets I got, boom, boom, done. That's it. So... All right, let's see. On to the next question. Well, scrolling through all these comments, there's a lot of thank yous, a lot of uh, you've been helping me out a lot, uh, things like that. Nice video. Really appreciate all the uh, the kind words that you guys leave all the time. Uh, it means a lot. Appreciate it. And um, it's nice to know that my videos are all all helping you guys and, and uh, that you guys appreciate that. All right, here's a good one that we're going to end on. Uh, DaVinci Resolve 18, how to upgrade, plus uh, what you should do before you upgrade. So, uh, Cynthia Bastidas. I don't know. Bastidas? Cynthia. So uh, she said, hey, Jason, love your content. I'm just getting started in self-producing. I find your channel very helpful. Thanks to you, I purchased Resolve 18 and the Speed Editor from Core Micro. Awesome. Good deal. Anyway, in this video, you keep mentioning, uh, you mentioned keeping the database on your laptop. And by that, I mean on your internal hard drive, right? She says, I keep my database externally to save space. Can you explain or refer me to another video if applicable? Applicable. As to why you recommend this, thanks in advance. So I always recommend you keep your database on the internal drive on your computer or one of the internal drives. Um, the reason being that's going to give you the best performance. Now, where does that come from? Well, when I started a long time ago, I had a database on an external drive and it worked okay. I didn't have any problems with it, but I did have some questions. So I reached out to Blackmagic, asked my questions about the database, how it works and everything. And they said, oh, no, no, you don't want to keep it on an external drive. Keep it on your internal drive. That's going to be the most reliable, give you the best performance. And a lot of times that's the fastest drive that people have is the internal drive on their machine. So that's what I've been doing ever since. I keep it on my internal drive. And honestly, the, the database is not that big generally. Um, if I take a look at my database, let me come over here. Uh, give me a second. How big is my database backups? Because that's going to tell me about how big my database is. So my database backups with several years worth of projects is only a gig. So it's really not that big. Database files or the project files themselves don't take up a whole lot of space. They, uh, it's just holding the information that tells Resolve how to put all your media and parts and pieces together and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a big file. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And like I said, that's a gig that I got about in my database. And it is four years old, maybe something like that. So, um, you know, I don't think you really have to worry about eating up a lot of space. Now your media, right? Your video clips, your pictures, images, you know, things like that, your music, your audio stuff, all that. Yeah. That's going to take up a lot of space and that perfectly fine to leave on an external drive. No problem there. And I actually do that with, uh, with a lot of my stuff too. I keep it on an external Samsung. I have a T5 and I just picked up a T7, uh, SSD. And that's what I keep all my projects on that I'm actively working on as well as all of my, my assets. I keep in my power bins, like my overlays, my music, my sound effects, all that. It all stays on that fast external drive. Um, that way I can bring it with me if I got to go somewhere and, uh, it doesn't clog up, you know, the internal drive of my computer, but the database always lives on the internal drive and I've never had any, any, uh, any issues with it. Um, and, and 
with it getting too big or anything like that. Cache files too, you want to clear that out. That I have go to an external drive too, your cache files and your project backup files if you have those set up um, because the cache files, they'll bog down your computer real quick. They fill things up real quick. So you want to clean those out every once in a while. All right, well, that wraps up this one, episode three here, answering more of your comments, questions, and uh, perhaps a concern here on the YouTube from things that you guys leave me on my various videos here. So I hope you guys are finding this helpful. I'm going to keep going with it for a little bit, try to be a little more consistent here. Uh, trying to, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to try and, you know, record these on Fridays, maybe release them on Fridays. I don't know. We'll see. Try and do a bunch, see if it sticks, see if you guys like it, see if people are listening to it. And uh, it's just something fun and something a little different here I can try talking about. Mostly DaVinci Resolve, but hey, once in a while, you know, we get into some other things here just for fun. Because um, sometimes I just talk and keep talking because I'm used to talking to myself a lot all the time. I'm always talking to myself. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And with that said, this is episode three of the DaVinci Resolve podcast. I'm going to check out a little USA soccer and uh, got to pick up some kids from the bus stop. So you guys have a good one and I will see you or hear you in the next podcast. All right, guys, we'll see you. Peace. <laughs>